Okay, so uh, this is the very first blog on the channel. Um, it's Paul Adams here, and that's Steve Richmond. Hopefully you can see, because I can't see what I'm doing with this camera. So we'll see so you find out. <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, we are literally just going to go and test the, uh, the cameras out today for some rear curtain sync. Um, I've been playing about with it today. Steve's always watching stuff on YouTube and, and learning all about stuff, so he probably knows more than anybody else. So watching's not doing. Watching's it all went not horribly doing. wrong. Well, it all went horribly wrong earlier as well. Um, so we are just <laughs> discussing about where we are going to go and uh, test this out. So uh, watch the video and see what happens. <laughs> Okay, so we're just sitting here deciding on how we're going to do this. We've, we've realised we've come across a few problems um, in that. If we are firing flashes into traffic, that's going to be quite dodgy. Um, so we need to try and find out a place that we can get the composition right without causing too much interference to things. So the downfalls that we've got is we've got a fire flash next to moving traffic um, and I don't want to annoy anyone or make them think they've got a ticket because that would be a bit, a bit mean, funny but mean so we can't really upset any drivers um, ideally the composition in my head which isn't practical is like I said it's having the kind of central shot, central reservation someone standing in the central reservation whether they're holding the camera or not because we can use it for portfolio shots I'm guessing so you then have the traffic whizzing by and you'll get all the light streams and then you, your rear curtain shutter fires and freezes the person in the centre um, but by doing that we're in between moving traffic on both lanes and I don't think that the, the local police would like us to do that either no. and the so, trouble that we've got is as soon as we, we can't gauge when that flash is going to go off really technically can we? we know it's or, 30 seconds yeah but, but we don't know what's going to come in 30 seconds no we don't, we can't predict what, what the traffic's going to be like 30 seconds down the road so it's going to be a bit of trial and error and um, we've got to try and get a pleasing composition without upsetting the local law enforcement hmm. or drivers. So that's the predicament we've got. See, other YouTube channels don't show this, they just show the finished product. Yeah, so, so we're, showing all the problems. So we're going to have a, a drive oh, around it. and um, we'll do a quick time lapse of us hunting about for a spot Yeah, and we'll see what we can find. Yeah, sounds like a plan to me. Is that on now? Yeah, I don't know what's coming out like though, because I don't know the other <laughs> way around. Okay, so we are um, at the A41, yep. and uh, Steve says there's not a lot of cars coming, but actually, just as I turn this on, there's a few. Um, so we are kind of stuck as to where we're going to go. We've got, we've got those behind us as well. There seems to be more traffic until you turn the camera around. coming down here, yeah, until I turn the camera around, but there, seem, there is more, cam more traffic, so we're going to head up there, um, up there, and see if we can do something so I'm gonna I'm gonna film Steve anyway and anyone who's familiar with our fourth wall videos will know that Steve and I argue all the time so I don't know if it is it's not a bike path that's that this is a road this is a slip road isn't it it's got road signs on it yeah. The slip road from the A41. Yeah. Again. So it's the same as that one over there? Yeah, so we have one over that side then. <laughs> so Steve's idea basically is that we are going to film this way. The flash is going to go directing over here uh, so that we don't catch uh, any of the driver's eyes as they come past and uh, and hopefully it'll work but I'm not convinced I'm gonna aim for I'm aiming for 
I want to expose for quite a long time. I'm aiming for like a shutter speed of 30 seconds. Okay. And then I'm going to aim, because I'm going to be up to 30 seconds, I've, I've had to ramp up my um, aperture to like a 18 f stop. So I'm allowed to put the ND camera on, but I can't put the ND camera on. But I don't really. I mean, ideally, 8 would be better, but then it means I'm looking at a shutter speed of around about. We'll see. So we, we took one image, uh, which we could probably show on the screen uh, anyway. Oh, that's not too bad. It's the hero shot, and we've got the light trails in the background. We just now need to set up the flash to freeze you. Okay. So I've got no idea what flash setting to have. Are you filming me? Yeah, I'm filming you. This awkwardness is great. I'm not going to bother with the light stands. No, you're just going to put it direct on camera. I'm going to hold it. You're going to hold it, okay. So I don't need to be holding the ram. Okay. So, right, so we're going to have an elongated flash because hopefully it will catch the body more. Um, I'm thinking I might need to bump the power a little bit because we're trying to add in a lot of light. But then it is 30 seconds, but we're only using we're going to need a lot of light. Okay, so basically, rear curtains, curtain sink. You just have to get into the flash menu, which is flash control here on the second menu on a Canon. And uh, you come down to built in flash set settings. No, it's not, is it? No, it's um, not. Uh, okay, so I don't think it matters at the moment. You've got a second curtain there already on that. So that should be alright. So external flash function. Okay. Is it because that's not on? Yeah. So it's got to be in there then. There's also a button on here. So we find out mm. this doesn't do rear curtain sync. Okay, so we might have come across a little bit of a problem in the fact that Steve's camera the flashes might not do rear camera, uh, rear curtain sync. Uh, if that is the case, we're just going to have to use the onboard flash, but we'll see now. Uh, I'm still checking. So what this goes to prove is that no matter how much preparation you do, you can still find yourself unprepared. Um, so I'm going to go in, check on YouTube and just double check what the settings are. So we have a little bit of an issue in the fact that this trigger uh, with its compatible flash does not work for rear curtain sync on a Canon. But Steve has an idea. I think that if we use this as a slave, because Canon will still use the onboard flash of the camera to fire on rear curtain sync, so we access that and set that up for rear curtain sync and then set this up as a slave, technically we'll have a rear curtain sync slave, which should do the same job, provided this isn't too powerful to light sync. So turn the power down on that, turn the power up on that and use it as a slave and put it on rear curtain sync. Maybe. Okay, so uh, we've been faffing around, we've been doing uh, quite a number of shots. Actually, we haven't done that many shots, have we, to be no, fair. Not really. And uh, we've got two really decent shots. Um, the first one coming up will be Steve's shot. And this is my shot. So, uh, what do you think then? I think we're done. Yeah, but well, what do you think of you? I don't know. I'd, I'd rather have I'd rather have my shot a little bit sharper. So probably I was using the speed light, so you've got one over one on the on the on the flash duration, which I think is probably in theory it shouldn't really cause too much of an issue. But it's, it's either not bright enough, and we're getting a lot of the background coming through, um, or it's not close enough. But I didn't really know how close. So I was going for that wide angle look of newer as well, so you don't really know how far you can get into the shot. 
without getting in the way. So I think it's all right. It is, could have been sharper, but practice makes perfect. Ooh. <laughs>